So listen, AR, AR augmented reality, it's not new for you, right? Definitely not. It's not new for you. So tell us, tell us in the crowd a little bit about you know, your background and how you got into AR. When did you get into AR? Yeah, absolutely. So it's been 12 years now that I've been working with augmented reality. And I think there were three pivotal moments um, that led me to augmented reality. And one of those, perhaps the most critical, was when I had my first augmented reality experience back in 2005. And it was really just a minimal demo. It was a floating 3D cube, but at that moment, I was just hooked, and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And you know, my jaw dropped, and I went into full mad scientist mode, so I just you know, prototyped the hell out of it, you know, and was really just kind of playing with and experimenting with you know, what it could be. And I was very fortunate that I had an incredible PhD supervisor, Dr. Caitlin Fisher, and she led the augmented reality lab at York University. And what was unique about our lab there was that we were uh, based in the Faculty of Fine Arts and Department of Film. And at that time, most labs were in computer science departments. So we were focused on storytelling and content development. And you know, before 2005, um, I, I worked at Bruce Mao Design back in 2002, and I led a project called Massive Change that some of you may have seen. It was an exhibit um, that opened at the Vancouver Art Gallery and came to the AGO, and it was a best-selling book with Fiden Press. And in that role, I kind of wore my futurist hat, and that's where I first came across the term augmented reality. And funnily enough, it didn't make the final cut, but you know, I, I stayed curious about it, and it came up again for me a few years later. And you know, I guess the last and perhaps first thing, and something that you may not know about me and that um, the audience may not know about me is that my background is traditionally, so I come, back, I come from a background in the fine arts. And I was very lucky to go to uh, an amazing high school in Scarborough called Wexford Collegiate, and we had an incredible arts program. And back then, I was um, very you know, enamored with printmaking, and printmaking was all about layering. You know, and so I, I love the idea of bringing in the digital and the tactile, so exploring materialities with virtualities. And you know, we had one computer, and the computer had Photoshop, I think, version one or two. So it was like, you know, super basic version. But what I would do is I'd take my prints and I'd, I'd bring them in and I'd manipulate them digitally. So you know, I'm over the moon to be surrounded by AR art tonight, and to even, you know, there's a big, um, AR exhibit also at the AGO called Reblank. So, um, you know, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's, I thought you were gonna say you also took a cruise ship course. No, but I went to Sheridan College. <laughs> that's great. Uh, so listen, um, 2005, you know, I did AR a little bit in 2007, maybe not yeah. to the same extent. So it's changed a lot, or has it? Tell me a little bit about the change or no change. Where, where do you think we are right now? Well, you know, I mean, the technology has certainly changed since 2005, 2007. Um, but you know, the other big part is, look, we're a sold out event tonight. You know, AR is in the public consciousness. People are excited about AR, and that's tremendous, and we need that to push the medium forward. You know, back in 2005 and, and 2007, the user experience was very different. So this was before the iPhone, right? And you know, kind of had this magic mirror experience where you would print out an AR marker and you would hold it up to your desktop computer and a webcam. It'd be this kind of awkward thing where you couldn't see your face and you had to like peer over the marker. And so, so that has you know definitely changed. And you know, um, I, I'm a strong believer in um, taking what we have and making the best out of it. So. You know, back in those days, we, we had a lot of limitations, but it was about creating compelling experiences what, with what we had. Mm. So, you know, we're still experimenting. We're in that phase where we're, um, you know, pioneering the possibilities and really exploring, you know, what we can make. Well, and, you know, I was talking to one of the, um, uh, the employees here at House of VR, and she said that the, the signs that we made, the posters, looked really much like 80s posters. Yeah. And I said, it's because like this is not the first time, not the first rodeo for AR and VR. And there's a long history. And actually, I think, you know, Karim at VRTO does a really good job at reminding us of the pioneers and the people that have worked before us. And, and it's really critical for us to go back to some of those lessons learned because we're going through some of the same things. I mean, my first VR experience was at Canada's Wonderland in one of those, you know, loopy, kind of like uh, round um, uh, contraptions. But do we have the same kind of terminology soup that we have now? I mean, AR, VR, MR, XR. I've even heard RR. What's RR? Real reality. Real, real, yeah. real reality. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so you know, look, the common denominator in all of those things is reality, mm. right? And so our reality, our relationship to reality is changing. And so, you know, we have um, AR where there's digital content, virtual content coming into our world. We have VR where we are leaving our physical world behind and entering a computer generated environment. You know, and then we have terms like MR and, and XR and, and MR is, um, it, you know, it goes back to 1994 and Paul Milgram, his critical paper, and where he identified mixed reality as this continuum where you have augmented reality on one end and you have augmented virtuality on the other end. And so it's this spectrum where you have different degrees of reality and virtuality coming together. You know, and, and XR is a, a new term, I think it's like 2006, right? So one of the fun things about a new medium is that we get to make up names, mm. right? We get to explore and we get to play. And you know, for me, at the end of the day, it, it doesn't really matter what we call it. It's going to be about the phenomenal experiences. So without the experiences, the terminology means nothing. You know? So for me, I, I suggest that you know, we concentrate really on, on creating kick-ass experiences. Well, but, but for now, we have to exhaust ourselves by saying <laughs> AR, VR, MR. You know? yeah. For the end consumer, they're just going to pick a brand, right? They don't say yeah, tissue, they true. say Kleenex. So you know, what is it going to be? What is the Kleenex going to be of AR, VR? So it's going to be interesting to say. But you know, I did a poll on Twitter about XR because I was interesting, interested in understanding who's using it. How many of you use the term XR? Wow, okay, what? that's cool. No, I think it's interesting. So on Twitter, everyone was, yeah, I'm using XR. XR is easier than AR and VR and MR because it's so much to say. And then I said, okay, XR people, what does XR stand for? They're like, they gave me 15 different answers. So I do think that in the industry, it is some, it's a distraction, I agree, but it, it's also some, you know, when you're writing a letter or you're putting in a presentation or a slide or a tweet, you know, how many, how many characters do you have to give up for this, right? So you're, you're coming out with a book. It's uh, on pre-order on Amazon, congratulations. Thank you. So, so yeah, round of applause for this book. Thank you. <laughs> and it's called Augmented Human, and I wanna get a better understanding as to how this reflects your viewpoint of augmented reality. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for plugging the book. I appreciate that. Um, so one of the taglines for the book is it's not just about augmenting reality, it's about augmenting humanity. And I think that, you know, we have this tremendous opportunity to create good with this new medium, to create experiences that uplift humanity, that enrich, and that are really um, human driven, human centered, and yeah, help us, you know, in our daily lives to, you know, have meaningful experiences. That's great. And, and in your book um, that I got a little bit of sneak peek of, which I'm grateful for, thank you, uh, you, you share a very common philosophy as mine, which is uh, right now in AR and VR, we're very focused on sight, possibly because most of us feel we perceive the world mainly through sight. Or maybe it's because we've been walking around with screens and we understand display, and that's the, the forefront of technology for the most part. But you talk a little bit about how we need to expand our definition and, and, our, and our understanding of augmented reality to go beyond beyond eyes. Uh, can you enlighten the crowd a little bit without giving your book away so they still pre-order it on my affiliate link, might I add? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so in the book there's a chapter devoted to each of the senses. So I, you know, I go into touch and haptics and, and smell and taste and, and audio as well. And so um, augmented reality, yes, is for the most part, uh, you know, vision based. But you know, there's so many more opportunities. Um, you know, audio is 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 something that you know is is interesting because we're kind of used to already wearing um, earphones. So hearables in the ear is a kind of a natural way, to, a natural place to put wearables. But you know, audio t typically accompanies visuals in augmented reality, but it need not. And there's some really great um, assistive technology experiences as well for people who are visually impaired. Um, and you know. Scent is, is one that you know, I'm kind of intrigued by. Scent is so personal and it's, it's really hard to um, get right. Scent is also an amazing um, storytelling um, capability if you think about it. And you know, one of the things that I'm interested in scent, um, in my book I, you know, I, I reference kind of early cinema and smell vision and we're starting to see exper um, experiments rather with augmented reality and virtual reality in scent. And, Yes, it has the potential to be hokey, um, but there's another area that is really intriguing to me, and that's around wellness. So one of the projects that I talk about in the book is, uh, is called ODE, O-D-E, and it's a, a product that is um, used for adults who have um, Alzheimer's and dementia, and it releases um, food fragrances to help with appetite. 
So, you know, I think as we're looking at um, all of these other senses, it's, it's, it's important to ask why, mm -hmm. right? Rather than just adding it in as a, you know, as a layer because, um, and yeah, how it can, can help enrich our lives. But do you believe that, if, you know, I don't know, let's say 100 years from now, however long it takes us, that we will have all of us digitized, all of our senses? Is that the future of augmented reality? I hope not. I like real reality still. <laughs> okay. But you know, it's interesting that you talk about smell because um, one of my favorite experiences, immersive experiences in New York is Ghostbusters with the Void. And the reason why I love that experience is not because you can walk around, not because you have four other people that can be in that experience and because it's Ghostbusters, but it's because, and it's not really a spoiler, so I hope I'm not spoiling this for you because you know Ghostbusters, but when you defeat the marshmallow man, uh, you smell burnt marshmallows. Yummy. In, in virtual reality. No, I'm telling you, it was, a, it was a silly thing that said to me, yes, I believe in scent. I believe that scent could actually elevate everything. And actually a Japanese startup just raised a good amount of money on, on their solution that I tried out at VRLA. Uh, that was a little cartridge attached to you know an Oculus. And it really did change the experience. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it adds another dimension. Right, and in thinking about um, presence in augmented reality and virtual reality, so in virtual reality, presence is the sense of you really being there in that virtual environment and buying into that illusion. And in augmented reality, it's about um, you kind of suspending disbelief and believing that that virtual content is in your space. And so things like um, integrating the other senses really add to presence and a sense of immersion. Right, and presence is this word that gets thrown around all the time in virtual reality. Does it exist in augmented reality? What, what does it mean in AR, this word presence? Yeah, so, so, so presence is, it's a way of measuring immersion. And so, so as I mentioned, so in augmented reality, it's about suspending your disbelief and believing that that virtual Tom I'm seeing sitting next to me is actually really there, mm. right? So it's about yeah, believing that that virtual content is in your space. And you know, some, some ways to, I guess, to heighten presence are through registration, right? So let's say, you know, I have virtual Tom and if virtual Tom is kind of floating in the air, I might not buy into it, but if he's sitting on the chair next to me and he has a shadow, um, then that really heightens the illusion and the sense of kind of immersion. I think if I was floating above you, you'd still believe me. Yeah, that's, I think <laughs> just I would. Just me though. Just because you're so godlike, Tom. Oh, right, whatever. Uh, you can clap for that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, last question, you know, you've been, as you mentioned, you've been in AR for a while now. This is, I'm not going to say this is the year of AR because when I was in mobile, it was always the year of mobile. It it's not is. the year of AR. This is not definitely the year, but it is a year for AR. Definitely, especially compared to, you know, virtual reality that had its, uh, one of its peak moments last year. We're seeing a ton of activity in AR and all the big guys are now playing. So it's not, not anymore um, if, it's just when, right? That's the big thing. So look into your, you know, vir augmented virtual reality ball in front of us and tell us where do you see this all going in three, five years? What, what do you think? So, so three years ago, I don't know if anybody in the audience was there, but Tom and I co emceed um, an event at FITC Wearables and Tom was wearing Google Glass. He wore it very well. It was coordinated to his shoes. It was orange. And yes, exactly. I remember. And so Google Glass kind of came and went and it's back, you know, for the enterprise. And so I hope in three years that we have, um, eyewear that we want to wear that is not just about work. You know, we may not wear it every day, but in three years, I, I really hope that we have experiences that are compelling enough that, that make us want to wear these devices. Okay, you heard it here. Big round of applause for Helen, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much.